Hello everyone and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Tuesday, December 5, 2023, Dan confides in Sam about his suspicions, Curtis asks Sonny for assistance with his inquiry, and Anna turns to Felicia for support. Laura assists Esm at home as she packs her and Ace's belongings for their move. Esm hugs Laura after telling her how appreciative she is of everything she has done for them. Now that the relocation is taking place, Esm acknowledges that she fears losing everything. Laura adds she's always welcome to come back here if it turns out to be an error. Esm gives her thanks. Cyrus is sweeping the floor at the Port Charles Grill when Ava enters. Telling her they're closed, he says. She promises not to require much of his time. She asks why he killed Austin and declares him dead. She admits he was shot in the chest at close range, which surprises Cyrus, who asks how and when. He refers to her as a heartless lady, but she maintains that it was he who killed him. Ava tells him that she is aware that he had Mason kidnap her in order to get Austin to testify about his condition and aid in his release. She charges him with killing Austin as payback. Austin was important to Cyrus, who maintains that he didn't kill him and that he even paid for Austin to go medical school. He adds that since he works until closing every night, he has an alibi. Does she have an alibi, he asks. Awa turns to go. When Laura visits Cyrus later, he asks her what brought her here. She was interested in learning how his employment was doing. She had explicitly told him to avoid her, so he wonders why she cares. She offers to go if he wants, but she understands that since they are related, they ought to attempt to work things out. That's all he's ever desired, he sobs. Cyrus sobs about the appalling treatment he received from his parents as a child and even his mother declines to take payment from him for her care. God knows what's in his heart. And that's more than enough for him, he yells, so she, Martin, and his mother may continue to treat him like dirt. Laura wants to think that he has changed and that she was mistaken about him. She hopes to give him one, and he sees that as an apology for later. They both chuckle. Cyrus assures her that he hasn't reverted to his previous ways and that, despite her objections, he will be visiting his mother if she doesn't see him for the next week. Laura wishes him a pleasant visit. After sharing a kiss at Christina's house, Blaze apologizes for surprising or upsetting her. Christina claims she is not at all uncomfortable. She wasn't even suspected of being gay by Christina. Blaze claims that because of her circumstances, she is unable to be authentic and is envious of people who are able to go out. Everyone is on their own journey, according to Christina, thus it is up to her how and when she chooses to show her sexuality. In this industry, Blaze claims to have witnessed a great deal of failed relationships, therefore she found it easier to concentrate on her work. Christina queries her about whether she truly believes that her sexuality would cause her admirers to object. Blaze imagines that although her strict Catholic family wouldn't embrace her, her fans would. Blaze talks about her recent trip to Puerto Rico to see her grandma and relatives. She says that since she was a young child, she hasn't seen her uncle, about whom no one talks. She claims that despite having a relatively popular name, she attempted to locate him online. She worries that if he came out as gay, he would lose his family. Christina tells her that coming out to your family is a scary but essential decision, that she is not bold enough to do it. While Christina acknowledges that coming out is not a must, she does clarify that she didn't feel uncomfortable about her sexual orientation when she told her mother that she was seeing an older married lady. She was worried that her dad, who is traditional, would reject her. Rather, he welcomed her right away and his affection gave her the freedom to discover her own self. Though she's not there yet, Blaze is delighted for her. Christina says it's entirely up to her when and if she chooses to come out to her family. She is available to her for anything she requires. She's amazing, Blaze tells her, and they kiss once more. When Blaze finally leaves, they agree to keep in touch. 
During their stay, Anna informs Felicia that she needs a friend badly. Felicia claims she's arrived at the ideal location. Anna sobs, saying that Charlotte's shooting is still causing her pain. Although Charlotte survived, Felicia refers to it as a tragedy. Felicia questions Anna after learning why she fired first. Because Valentin kept her in the dark, Anna says she assumed her stalker was waiting for her and didn't realize it was Charlotte. She tells Valentin everything that happened with Charlotte, but he didn't trust her enough to let her know. Felicia apologizes but maintains that she had nothing to do with anything and that it's over for them. Felicia queries the WSB employee she believes is out to get her. Anna informs her that this agent Forsyth was the cause of an unsuccessful operation years ago, but the WSB covered that up. She claims that she stored other materials in a trunk along with a copy of the report for safekeeping. She discovered the report as she was searching the trunk for anything that might provide her with a clue after her house burned down. Anna reveals that she told Robert about her misgivings over Forsyth, and he concurred. That evening, when she returned home, she discovered someone there. When she entered the room armed, she shot Charlotte because she couldn't see clearly and thought she had a gun. She goes on to say that soon after the incident, Forsyth's body was discovered in Port Charles and the evidence vanished. She is certain that something from the report caused his death. When Don gets to Sam's house, he gives him the piece of evidence, a key that was discovered with Jamison Forsyth, and claims that it might hold the answer to who is pursuing Anna. He also informs her about Anna's lost evidence on Forsyth and indicates that it goes to a locker at a rail station. Luckily, he was able to persuade the me to omit the key from his report. Once they are in bed, Dandy keeps telling her about the evidence Anna had that Forsyth vanished following Charlotte's shooting. Subsequently, the key and a dead body of Forsyth were discovered. He hasn't checked and hasn't yet alerted Anna that the proof she had may be at the train station locker. Why not, she queries. Dan worries that someone killed Forsyth and may be pursuing Anna, and that it could be a trap. Why doesn't he give the PCP the key, she wonders. He claims that the WSB may be keeping an eye on the case, and that if they found the report in that locker and destroyed it, Anna would be in even greater risk. Sam queries why. Given that it occurred in the 1980s, this is even a problem. Dante implies that there might be more names in that report, which is why Anna might still be in danger. Brennan is upset with Sonny in his metro court chamber since he rejected their offer. How long will he be in town, Hume inquires. Brennan stays a little while longer to ensure that the shipments to Canada are organized and Titus up the mess that Forsyth left behind. How will he explain the head of the WSB having a long leave of absence, Hume queries. Being the director has its benefits, according to Brennan, who also notes that everything else came into place after getting rid of Frisco. He can work remotely. Is Sonny or Anna their first priority, in Hume's opinion? He is told by Brennan both. Why don't they kill Sonny, Hume wonders. According to Brennan, that would leave a gap in the mob world which would lead to people competing to fill it and drawing unwanted attention. He believes they managed to compel Sonny's hand. Why the fascination in Anna, wonders Hume. Brennan informs him about Forsyth's incident and Anna's possession of a copy of the mission report. Forsyth was meant to get it and get rid of Anna, but he didn't succeed in either endeavor. According to Brennan, Forsyth left a last message indicating that he still had the report making it a ticking time bomb. When Curtis drops by Sonny's office, he wants his assistance. Any names of people who would be interested in taking a stab at Curtis. Curtis says he wants to know who is Sonny's top suspect and is searching for the person who put him in this chair. Sonny tells Curtis that Cyrus may have shot him, but he still doesn't know if he shot him during the summertime. Sonny mentions that the gun that was fired at him came from a Berlin WSB locker. Is Anna, in Curtis' opinion, the intended victim? Not always, Sonny responds. Curtis learns from Sonny that Pikeman has ties to the WSB and that their attempts to collaborate with him didn't work out. Curtis knows Pikeman might be after Sonny. 
Although Sonny is unsure if Pakeman attempted to kill him, he doesn't understand why they would pursue Anna. Curtis says he will have to start from the beginning. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.